for avoiding this SQL injection, there are two layers of protection that we're going to be applying. The first is to validate the information that's being sent in the request or sent in the payload. So for validate username, for example, we have this regex test, which will send back a Boolean of true or false to determine whether or not we should even allow the username to be processed. So if the username contains something that's not alphanumeric or underscores, anything else like single quotes, like dashes, not going to pass through, not going to pass through. And we can do the same thing for category. We can do the same thing for numbers, the same thing for strings. Okay, that's the first level of protection. And then here you can see on our API login endpoint, let me go ahead and comment this out, okay? We're going to first validate the username and validate the string. And if that fails, then we don't even proceed on into the try statement for the database. It just stops right there. Let me go ahead and show you how that would work. So coming into our backend terminal, I will instead switch this to the not as vuln script for our Node.js. Coming into our application, I'll just do a quick refresh. Let me copy this. All right, let's paste that in. Password, one, two, three. Let me clear this out to make it fresh for you. Click login. And notice that our response is invalid username or password format. I'll send it over multiple times. We get the same response every time. And then also notice on our Docker container, it never got processed, right? The last statement query was from the web application doing the category lookup for the products on electronics, but the actual login with the malicious payload never gets processed by the backend. The code just stops it right there upon validation of the string and the username. 